So back during the summer of love, remember that? Yeah, summer of 2020 here in Seattle. We had some incidences happen that mm, can't really attribute to the summer of love. Summer of chaos, summer of mostly peaceful. Uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, we had a bunch of crazy stuff go on here in Seattle. One of them was on 4th of July 2020. This is kind of right in the heart of all that protesting that was going on. We had protesters on I-5. One of the incidents that happened was a guy driving his car gets on the freeway, which is where these protesters are, and just rammed into a couple of them, launched them. This is a follow-up podcast on what happened to the one individual that did survive that incident. The other one died, I think, that night. Um, but you've got one that lived. And he's protesting on the freeway. They literally, there's footage of them having a dance party, like a live dance party on Facebook while they're protesting on the freeway. And the one individual that survived this wreck, this accident that happened, um, he's suing the city, the state, and a bunch of other entities saying, hey, this shouldn't have happened to me. I should have been okay to peacefully protest on the freeway. Bunch of stuff with this one that I, I have a tough time with. We're seeing these lawsuits come to fruition. One of the lawsuits regarding Alonzo Anderson, he was the first individual, the 19-year-old kid at CHOP that lost his life in a, he got he got uh, shot at CHOP. He was the first one. And uh, another 16-year-old man died a couple of weeks after that. But literally, today is uh, June the 20th, and um, it, it was during this week, two weeks, two years ago that uh, Alonzo Anderson lost his life in uh, by shooting at CHOP. And that was one of the things that really started to kind of – we had all of these events happen and eventually ending up with the closure of CHOP. Wild times, right? Okay, so let's get into this. We've got a lawsuit going here. Does it stand merit? Does guy have any merit or is he just, just filing a lawsuit just because – the lawsuit that Alonzo Anderson, the first guy that got killed at CHOP, his dad filed a lawsuit, just settled with the city of Seattle for half a million dollars for 500000 So in these uh, loss of life type lawsuits, there's usually a payout. There's usually a payout. We've had city of Seattle as much as three and a half million. I think we just uh, settled one. And they do that so that they avoid going to trial and spending even more money. So these victims, or whatever you want to call them, know that they're going to be able to squeeze some money out of the city of Seattle. On this one, I am really questioning whether the city has any liability. On Alonzo Anderson, I think the city does have liability from the standpoint of they created a lawless environment. And then when something goes sideways on one of its citizens, you know, whether good, bad, or indifferent, um, and that individual loses his life and they can't get the ambulance to him. They can't get the medics to him because the police aren't there to clear out the situation involving a shooting. City's got some liability. They do. On this one here that we're going to talk about, the dance party on I-5. Mm, all right. Let's get into it. Before we do, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies. I read the news and I would love to have you subscribe if you haven't already Hit that like button if you like this video. Hit the notification bell. That way, each time we release a video, you'll get notified. All right, let's enough of that. Let's get into it. A Seattle resident critically injured by a driver doing a Black Lives Matter demonstration in the summer of 2020 has filed a lawsuit against the state, city, and suspected driver. Go after everybody. Shotgun the approach. Somebody will pay. That's what. That's the deal, right? DeWitt Khalid is accused of hitting two protesters, killing one of them after driving around a roadway, roadway barricades and taking an off-ramp onto Interstate 5 on July 4th, 2020. So one of the big questions was, how did he get on the freeway? We thought they had it all closed off. These were 
These were running scenarios. The police were meeting. Washington State Patrol was meeting with protesters. All right, we'll let you protest. You shouldn't really be protesting on the freeway. That to, me, that to me is the first clue, right? Here's your sign. Don't protest on the freeway. But you know what gets a lot of eyeballs on your cause is if you protest on the freeway, good, bad, or indifferent. So you got people doing their dance party on I-5 and, you know, they're supposed to have some protection. Clearly, if it's a freeway, that's where cars belong for the most part. This guy, even though the on-ramp was blocked, he was able to get onto this area of the freeway by going in through the outdoor, right? He was going on an off-ramp. So, I mean, these times were super difficult for, for the police to handle anyway, because you had just so many just events and things going on, not necessarily good. But to take a position of, I got hit by a car on the freeway. It's like, okay, yeah, this is a try for. King County Superior Court lawsuit filed by Diaz Love. He's the individual who sustained a traumatic brain injury, multiple fractures, lacerations, displacements, and other wounds. Alleges Khalid was driving negligently. Yeah, maybe he was. But cars belong on the freeway, right? I mean, that's that's just the basis of what I'm talking about. Cars belong on the freeway. People don't. Now, if you want to say, okay, protesters, you have a right to be there. I'm going to say you have a right to be on the sidewalk because of a normal street, not an interstate. This is I-5. You want to protest peacefully down whatever street. That's I, I'm okay with that. Stay on the sidewalks or have police escort. You didn't have really any of that here. You just had some people running on the freeway who didn't want to deal with police. And the the thing about this is this was definitely, this was one of those anti-police movement type you know, protests as well. This is Black Lives Matter. That's the heart of that, right? We we're trying to defund the police. And literally, this is one of those situations where call 911, call 911, because two of them have been hit by this driver. They immediately call 911. I have a hard time with that. If you want to defund the police, if you want to get rid of the police, then you're going to have to take your, you know, you're going to have to take your lumps if, you know, something goes sideways, not just boom, Johnny on the spot, expect the police to be there. That's not really how life works. So that's another situation here where it's like, okay, I'm sorry you got hit by a car on the freeway that probably shouldn't have been there. All right. But you were having a dance party on the freeway. The suit filed uh, Tuesday alleges state and city agencies failed to block all access ramps to Interstate 5 and refused to protect vulnerable protesters. How much protection are you supposed to give to people playing grab ass on the freeway? How, how, mu how much protection are you supposed to give? To, to those groups. The lawsuit names its defendants, the Washington State Patrol, Washington State Department of Transportation, Seattle Mayor's Office, and the Seattle Police Department. Everybody's trying to get in on these lawsuits. I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, there might be some payout. If you can figure out how to afford the fees, you know, lawyer's fees getting going, going into it. It alleges the agency failed to reinstate a policy banning pedestrians from obstructing freeways during protests and wrongly prohibited and removed protester support vehicles on the freeway, which aren't supposed to be there, which are sometimes used as protective barricades. So the protesters bring their cars onto the freeway where they shouldn't be because they're protesting on a freeway. And then a car comes on and hits a couple of them and they immediately call 911. Whole thing is just backwards, right? It's just, it's not reasonable. It's like, what are you doing on the freeway? What are you doing on the freeway? That's a hard no-go. In my book, that's a hard no-go, period. All right? Yeah, cars and people driving by at 80 miles an hour don't really mix. And if you want to have somebody testify to the fact that they don't mix, ask this guy following the lawsuit, right? He got messed up. I mean, he's toast, right? At least he's not dead. Khalid told jail officials he was struggling. This is the guy who hit the two people. He was struggling with an untreated addiction. And Washington State Patrol investigators found several implements commonly used to smoke illegal substances. 
he was a, it was in a period where he was smoking a bunch of meth. All right, this is not the first time this happens, especially in city Seattle, where you know upon your coming to Seattle, you get a free tent, some free food, and um, you know you need a crack pipe. We're your city. We're your city. And a substance, and so he's um, struggling with untreated addiction, and Washington State Patrol investigators found several implements commonly used to smoke illegal substances. Well, I don't believe they're illegal here in the state of Washington, in the city of Seattle. I don't know. And a substance that appeared to be similar to crystal meth. Okay. Looks, looks like that's similar to crystal meth. In the car he was driving, according to charging papers, Washington State Patrol drug recognition expert determined he had not been drinking and did not appear to be under the influence, according to the charges. That was an interesting one. He pleaded not guilty to vehicular homicide, vehicular assault, and reckless driving charges in late July 2020. Now, it sounds like the individual that did survive has got some probably pretty significant injuries. If you would have seen, you can Google this. I think July 4th, 2020, vehicle hits protesters. I mean, just the impact of this car hitting these people was just, I mean, you can barely watch. It looks like they're rag dolls just being tossed up in the air, you know, coming down, hitting the pavement. Horrible, horrible situation. But is there liability be from the state, the city, Washington State Patrol, or this driver? I'm going to say your greatest level of liability is from this driver who's high on meth or whatever. All right, but, you know, good luck getting some money out of this guy, right? I mean, doubt it. Probably not going to happen. The state, the city, Seattle Police Department, any of those entities, yeah, there's some money. Definitely there's money out there, no matter how far, how hard you want to battle it. In the case of... um uh, Lorenzo Anderson, he's the kid that his dad just successfully got 500000 in a wrongful death lawsuit. Um, they basically settled. And there are other lawsuits. Uh, Lorenzo Anderson's mother has a lawsuit against the city, a federal lawsuit that initially was dismissed, and then it's on appeal now. So that could be another lawsuit stemming from the the whole chop thing. What a debacle. So we're we're at a point now, a couple of years have gone by and we're working our way through these lawsuits. I don't think this lawsuit goes anywhere. I I just don't. I can't see maybe they'll settle for a little bit of money, but I don't see this. And and that's probably essentially what this guy is looking for. Uh, his life is turned upside down. But when you are running around on the freeway, Know that that's where cars go. Cars on the freeway. People, hard no go. And if there's a technicality, it's going to be, yeah, but, you know, they should have blocked off this off ramp that this guy got on. Right. Does that seem reasonable that the police are going to block off the off ramps as well? Somebody going literally in through the outdoor? Um, I don't know. Does that seem reasonable? No, it seems like a lawsuit filed by somebody who's like, okay, maybe I can squeeze some money out of this because it doesn't look good. But also having a dance party on I-5 during your protest, that doesn't look good either, right? I mean, it's just not the place or the time for that kind of thing. And when we talk about peaceful protesting, don't peacefully protest on the freeway. Because I believe, I mean, that's that's what folks would look in and say it was. Some of the things said during, you know, those protests are not necessarily peaceful topics at all. But there is an actual, I don't believe there was actual violence going on. The only violence that happened during this protest was these two people being absolutely smacked by a car going up in the air, coming down one of them not living, one of them living with some major, major injuries. And he's going to sue everybody, you know, sue, sue the whole uh, just shotgun to people that have liability and away we go and, and see where it goes from there. So this is a lawsuit that's been filed. We've got other ones that are being closed up. The lawsuits against the city for, you know, by businesses and homeowners in the actual chop area. Those are still going on. We're still waiting. We we're waiting to get information on all the texts that went back and forth. It looks like in back and forth between the city leaders, between the mayor, between the um, 
chief of police and the chief of the the fire chief. But you know that's the whole story of well, you know, I deleted all my texts, or I dropped my phone in Puget Sound, or I dropped my phone in the water, dropped my phone in the toilet. All of those miraculous, you know, six billion to one odds of all of those leaders losing their phones and their texts being deleted. Uh, yeah, I dropped my phone and somebody reset my phone and they hit that little button where it deletes all the texts after 30 days. Even though I'm a public official and I know that I have liability to keep all those texts as part of record keeping, that didn't happen. So we've got a lot of leadership here in city of Seattle because of all these lawsuits going on that are like, oh, not me. Not, not me. It's my tech guy. My tech guy, he redid my phone and <laughs> wow, <laughs> don't have those texts anymore. As did like six or seven people in leadership positions in Seattle during that time period. Don't have any texts from that period. Oh, it's not good. That to me leads me to believe there's some significant liability in some of these cases to the city of Seattle, where you clear out an area and just say it's a cop-free zone. Well, that includes if somebody needs medical attention. And that was the case with Alonzo Anderson, 19-year-old kid who graduated the day before from high school, from an alternative high school. Graduates, gets shot, bleeds out, dies. Yeah, because the city can't get all their bits and pieces functioning because whomever in city position has said, yep, no police in there. This will be good. It'll be the summer of love. Summer of love until it wasn't. And this doesn't even begin to talk about the other kid who got shot in CHOP, who was 16. He got taken down by those protesting in CHOP. Antifa and Black Lives Matter. We don't ever talk about that, do we? No. How come? How come? And no charges were ever made in that shooting. How come? Well, because there were too many people doing the shooting and those people, <laughs> that wouldn't look good. We can't have that. We can't, we can't have that kind of message going out. Ah, that doesn't fit the narrative. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's ignore that. But the protesters, uh, having the dance party on I-5. Hmm. Yeah. That one didn't end up well. So if you have kids, Tell them, don't play games on the freeway. It may not go in your favor. And whether somebody, you don't want to see anybody get hit by a car. You know what I mean? Terrible accidents happen. This one just flat shouldn't have happened. But does the city have liability? Does the state have liability? Does state have, the state patrol have liability? I'm going to say probably not. It just, this is a terrible accident. This happened. Will there be a payout? Probably. But they do that just to settle. And then everybody thinks, ah, there was some liability there and they're admitting guilt. They're not. They're just paying out to make it go away. It's what we got going on. It's what we're doing. All right. So that's kind of a little bit of an update on some of the situations that are happening out there. Chop and lawsuit by the condo owners and business owners basically saying, hey, city, you screwed us. That's still ongoing. A couple of lawsuits with the kids that have been killed. Federal one by the mom of Alonzo Anderson still continues. One for 500,000 to Alonzo's dad. That was settled up last week. 500 grand. Doesn't bring his kid back. That's the bottom line there. Doesn't bring his kid back one way or the other. Pay some bills. That's probably about it. So sad to see that one. But, you know, these situations go on because the summer of love didn't really turn out that way, did it? No. We've got these lawsuits because it, wasn't the summer of love. It was something wildly the opposite. So when you scream at your children or your grandchildren, don't play in the street, you are absolutely 100% correct. Sorry to hear about this, this, this guy being injured and all, but hey, you know, life has consequences. You got to deal with them sometimes. That's the way I see it. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Hit that subscribe, hit that like, hit all that good stuff. Much appreciated. We'll catch up with you in the next one. Talk then. Bye for now.